Hey everybody, Michael Snyder. Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is September 5th and right now we're looking at some of the footage I got from the Wildcat Fire on September 3rd just off to the east of Mount Rainier. This is looking south on Highway 410. You can see those flames right behind the ridge line there producing huge amounts of smoke. This produced its own cloud and its own lightning strikes as a result. There's a lot of ash across the area as well. So in this pattern change we come up with here, we're hoping to get this troughing in here, which looks like it's coming. And then we need this to continue through the month of September to really suppress some of these fires. And we really need it badly here because we are, we're filled up the atmosphere here with smoke across Pacific Northwest and we're trying to get a break. But it looks like changes are coming next week. Some rainfall will be coming, but don't expect just some rain to come in and extinguish these fires. It's gonna take a while and we still can warm back up at this time of year and hopefully no offshore winds are coming which really can you know increase the fire conditions here and get some active fires continuing through the month of september and hopefully these troughs stay progressive but we'll take a look at that here as we go through the video today and first things first we do have this system moving across the area it's created quite a few lightning strikes across portions of oregon yesterday nothing for washington but that will be changing here over the next couple of days as this trough here continues to drive south and it will approach the coastline keep us in that southeasterly flow a lot to thunderstorm potential across the area then eventually the trough is going to pivot over the west coast here mainly across oregon and keep us in a cooler pattern coming up here so that's really going to help with the ongoing fires and it's not going to allow them to produce huge amounts of smoke but putting them out altogether is a completely different story and if we take a look at yesterday i'll back this all the way up here and you can see that thunderstorm activity across portions of oregon and then it moved out across portions of the coastal range as well and let me put the lightning strikes overlaid on here also i'll put that on there and you can see as we went through the overnight and morning hours probably a lot of you woken up as you were sleeping across the coastal range oregon coast still getting thunderstorms as we go through the morning currently you can see one right there a few lightning strikes lightning strikes now ongoing just off to the southeast of the portland metro and now some starting to move into the southern washington cascade so this is going to be coming out as we go through the day today tomorrow and maybe on into sunday morning now you don't need me to tell you that it's been smoky out there. I've been smelling some smoke here across some of the central Puget Sound as well. You can also see some stratus layer out there kind of pushed into the terrain features of the Olympic Mountains. Thunderstorm activity now moving into Washington and very smoky skies out there. Now, this is the vertically integrated smoke and just kind of showing you the, the wildcat fire still producing smoke over the next couple of days. But hopefully as we get off in towards next week, we're not going to be quite as dry and unstable. So those fires should calm down a bit, but they're not going to get put out yet. It's going to take a while to do that. In fact, that may not happen as we, until we go off into the early portion of winter until we can start getting the snows to really smother and put out those fires. Now, drought monitor came out yesterday. You can see a lot of the Northwest here is drought stricken. There's some extreme drought widespread severe drought you got to go across portions of southeast oregon to get drought free right now including the idaho panhandle look at that it's got some exceptional drought out there now lightning strike density over the last 24 hours again nothing yet for or actually there was one across washington but mostly across oregon so far but that is going to be changing updated that it didn't show it but yeah anyway this is going to be changing as we go through the next couple of days we'll look at that in some detail here in a moment and if you want a nice affordable home weather station that just happens to record lightning it does everything else a weather station should click on the link down below to save 10 percent off it helps support the channel you won't regret buying this station so now here we are, the European model. This is that trough here starting to approach the coastline. And you can see the main trough is still out across the Gulf of Alaska, but this is going to be driving down as we go on in through the weekend here. And this will be with us as we go on in through next week. So that is a good thing. That's the start. Hopefully, we, you know, you start to suppress some of these fires here and that will do the trick. We're just trying to hope that these troughs thereafter continue to be progressive and we don't have any big ridging or any big offshore winds, dry easterly winds can really get those fires raging again it's not too late to do that so hopefully these troughs remain progressive more on that here in a moment but if i back that up you can kind of see how the flow as we go on in through saturday and saturday night is southeasterly across the area so that's going to keep the thunderstorm potential going probably on into sunday morning west of the cascades at least now thunderstorm lightning risk today there should be no surprise with what we just looked at cave junction grants passers paisley fort rock and crater lake and again lightning hail heavy rain gusty winds gusting at 50 miles per hour potentially starting some new fires out there so keep your wits about you especially if you're off across the back country in pendleton oregon also talking about those gusty winds red flag warnings through tonight about 11 p.m 
fires may exhibit extreme fire growth. Now, you don't need me to tell you that it's smoky out there, but the Spokane National Weather Service does have these air quality alerts, especially for Eastern Oregon, Colville Republic, Wenatchee, Ellensburg, Yakima, Moses Lake, Ritzville, Spokane, you name it, you're underneath that air quality alert most likely. And this is thunderstorm potential today. The Storm Prediction Center is paying attention to us up here in the Pacific Northwest, and you can see it does include portions of Western Washington even, and tomorrow, and then maybe through Sunday morning also. So, and also the isolated dry thunderstorm potential exists today and tomorrow as well. Now, you can see as we go through Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we start to get back into that low risk there. But we still have a few days to go, actually a couple days, today and tomorrow, before that risk starts to drop off. And the trough will be with us. And hopefully the troughs remain progressive, like I mentioned. Now, looking at the European model. So as we go through the day today, it's picking up a little bit of this activity across the Washington Cascades. But as we go through Saturday morning, some of this tries to come over western Washington. Washington as well. Would not be surprised to see some thunderstorm activity, even off towards the coastline here, some of the central Puget Sound cascades yet again. And as we go through the day on Saturday, look at this band come back up across the region, Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, Southwest Washington. Will this get far as north as the Seattle Metro? Maybe. But you can see the chance is going to be all the way on in through Sunday morning. And then the main trough is going to be swinging over the area as we go on in through next week, bringing additional precipitation amounts. But again, this is not going to be enough to suppress or put out these fires, at least the larger ones, uh, probably not until well off into the fall season maybe even winter. Now composite reflectivity on some of the high resolution models. As we go through the day today, you can kind of see that thunderstorm activity rolling around out there as we go through later tonight, tomorrow morning, starts to emerge across some of Western Washington. Then we get another round moving out there as we go on into Saturday. This could be interesting. This could be have some decent amount of lightning strikes with it as it comes across Southwest Washington, maybe up towards the Seattle Metro across the Cascades as well, as that swoops northbound across Northwest Washington as well. Could be some lightning activity associated with that. So we may get a lightning show out of it. Now, the high resolution rapid refresh, let's scroll through this as well, does show something similar. Again, Saturday morning, the first wave moves across western Washington. It moves up across the area again. And you can see these thunderstorms as we go through Saturday afternoon develop across the Cascades and potentially move out over some of the lower elevations as we go on into Saturday evening and Saturday night and kind of see things still going on by Sunday morning. Now, total precipitation in inches. Scrolling through this fairly quickly, if I go through the six-day period, you can see this is kind of hit and miss and scattered. And that's why I want to caution people. Don't just expect we're going to get a little bit of rainfall here and these fires are going to be out. That's not how it works. And you can see some areas are not getting a lot of rainfall, at least out of this first trough. We need follow-up troughs after that. Now, if we look at the artificial intelligence and we scroll through this, we go on into Wednesday. It shows a little bit better here, but I think because the resolution isn't that great, it's just kind of broad brushing things a little bit more. It does show better amounts across portions of Oregon, so that's better for the enterprise fire there. And again, these troughs will help suppress the fire. You're not going to have any huge plume, thunderstorm, smoke, fire stuff, just ongoing, you know, Armageddon, <laughs> extreme fire behavior. That is likely over for the time being, unless we get some kind of big ridging and offshore wind event. That is probably over as we go through the month of September. So I hope I didn't just jinx it, but we'll continue to watch it day by day. Now, if we look at the artificial intelligence, take a little bit of a look at the extended forecast. There goes our trough that we talked about. It's going to be with us on in through the mid portion of the week. Then that one clears out and hopefully this trough stays progressive and it does not allow this next ridge to build over the area. It kind of swings towards British Columbia there. Then the ridge wants to build again. We need this next trough to also be progressive and start to get towards Pacific Northwest. Tries to build a little bit here across the region. We'll, we'll see how that goes and we'll check back daily and then i don't like that sign there but at least we're starting to get later into the season we've got time on our side as long as we can keep some troughing around and we get towards october our conditions are going to improve dramatically across the area so national blend of models daily two meter max temperature and again these are really going to be off by quite a bit the smoke can really wreak havoc with some of these high temperatures but again it's been muggy out there as well if you haven't noticed that so a, a pretty warm day again today but as we go through tomorrow, we start to cool down a little bit. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, as we go through next week, you can see the entire region is quite cooled down. I mean, look at this. You're only in the 70s for eastern Washington, Oregon, 70s for the Willamette Valley, maybe touching 70 if you're lucky on Tuesday for Seattle, and then kind of I mean, maybe a little bit of a warm up after that trough goes through. We'll watch that on a daily basis. Six to 10 day mixed bag across the Pacific Northwest there, September 10th through 14th. And that above average signal continues to be with us. So that is a good thing. 
no doubt. 8 to 14 day, kind of an above average signal. I think they're kind of picking up on some of that ridging out there through the extent of it. Let's hope it's not too extreme. And then the 8 to 14 day broad brush above normal there. And check out the Patreon page if you want down below. Any more hacking attempts to the channel and you go to the Patreon page to see exactly what is happening. I have independent control of this now from the YouTube channel. So anyway, one more look here at the fire. It was pretty... Pretty amazing here watching just how much it ebbed and flowed and some of the, the colors changed. And, you know, the light would just flicker and get really bright and then kind of go back down. And then you would see some trees near the ridge line kind of showing some flames. You can see them bubbling up there as well. So pretty impressive stuff. Um, hopefully we're on the downward trend though as we go through the month of September, which we should be. But anyway, I'll get this video out. Hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Let me know what you think down below and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.